Hydrogen, oxygen, H2O, in the shower. Yeah. Hey, who turned off the water pressure? Am I getting pranked? You're not being pranked, sir. There appears to be a problem with our water system. But fear not, I'll enlist the help of Lab Assistant Neon to solve this issue. In the meantime, be careful not to fall in that slippery tub. <laughs> I'm okay. I know you called and said it was an emergency. Uh, calm? Lab Assistant Neon, I'm so happy you made it. Professor Whirl needs your help. Oh, are there spiders on his keys? Worse. Oh, are there two spiders on his keys? It's nothing to do with spiders. Professor Whirl was taking a shower when the water pressure disappeared. Oh no! Well, can't we get Akuro to help? He does have water spraying abilities. Unfortunately, Akuro is with Leo all week. Hmm, well, maybe since Akuro's not here, we could think like Akuro. Brilliant idea, Sissy I'll share with you what I know about water pressure, and together perhaps we can think of a way to ensure Professor World gets squeaky clean. Great, then I think it's time for Chemistry with Calm. As we've discussed in the past, water, or H2O, is made up of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is a chemical element with a symbol of H and the atomic number of 1. Oxygen is a chemical element with a symbol of O and an atomic number of 8. In its liquid state, the hydrogen atoms in one water molecule are highly attracted to the oxygen atoms in another water molecule. Oh yeah, I know about that. The stickiness of molecules is called cohesiveness. It's what gives water its unique traits, like the ability to be poured, which you can't do with solids or gases. Exactly, and these sticky bonds also make compressing water very difficult. Right, because when you compress water, the molecules want to stick together and not break apart. But if they have nowhere else to go, they'll push outward equally in all directions, and that is called water pressure. Precisely. Now, if you give that compressed water a small hole to escape from, all that built up pressure will be redirected, resulting in a powerful stream, like you see in a water blaster. But the more escape routes you give the water, the more evenly the pressure will be spread out and the weaker the stream will be. Correct, which means if Professor World's shower pressure is weak, it may be because there's a leak somewhere in his water system. So are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oh yeah, I know exactly how to help the professor. We've got to build a water blaster to hose the professor down with. You just want to build a water blaster, don't you? Mm-hmm, yep. <sighs> okay, we'll split up. I'll search for the leak of the plumbing while you work on a water blaster. Love it, and break. <gasps> To build my patented Acro Aqua Blaster 9000, I'm going to need two water bottles, PVC pipe and fittings, an electric water pump, clear tubing, and a power supply. Now remember, I'm a professional who knows how to use all this equipment, so if you're trying this at home, make sure to ask an adult for help. First, we're going to cut our PVC into five different sized pieces. Next, we are going to assemble the body of our blaster using the PVC pieces and fittings. So this is our basic blaster shape. Ooh, ah. And now, I'd like to take the time to introduce you to my assistant. Wait, I'm the assistant to the assistant? Hey, so now it's time to drill the holes. We need to drill six small holes. Four are going to be used to mount our 12-volt water pump with zip ties. I have the pump and the zip ties. Huh. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Next, we are going to run our pump wiring through the remaining two holes. The positive wire is ran through the front of the pump and down to the handle where our button will be. The negative wire is ran out the back where our power supply will be connected. Now, where did I put my... Button? Uh, yeah, thanks. 
it's time to install our button that will act as an on-off switch for our blaster. We are going to need a larger hole for our button so that the fit is nice and secure. Our button is connected to the positive wire of our pump and the positive wire of our power supply port, which is mounted all the way at the back of our blaster. The negative wire from our pump will be connected to the negative side of our power supply port. Once the power supply is plugged into the port and the wall outlet, the electrical circuit is complete and the blaster will have endless amounts of power. The Akuro Aqua Blaster 9000 is coming along and now it's time to add our hoses. And now it's time to add our hoses. We are using two hoses, one for the inlet and one for the outlet. The inlet hose is running from the top of our blaster, where the water tank will be, through the back of the body and is attached to the inlet side of our water pump. The outlet hose is connected to the outlet side of our pump and is ran through a hole in the side of our blaster barrel, which is then ran all the way to the front of our blaster. Next step is to connect the hose to a brass fitting and rubber tip, creating the blaster spray nozzle. We are securing this in place using a PVC cap. The blaster spray nozzle is an important feature because it reduces the size of the hole that the water is pushed out through. This compresses the water, which increases the water pressure, which will give our blaster a longer and more powerful stream. The final step in our build is to create and mount our water tank. We'll start by cutting the top off of our small water bottle and drilling a hole in the base of our water bottle tank. Next, we'll glue and secure the top of the small bottle to the base hole, which will allow us to add more water to our tank as needed. To fit the inlet hose in our tank, we need to drill out a hole just big enough in the cap of our main water bottle. Now that it's all drilled out, everything should fit in place. Okay, it's finally time to test out the Akuro Aqua Blaster 9000! This is gonna be great! Now, before we decide to use this blaster on the professor, it's probably a good idea to test it out on some fun, I mean, scientific targets first. You know, for science. So now that my water pump is hooked up to my power supply, the water in the tank is ready to be pressurized. Let's see if this works. <laughs> but, you know, this target doesn't really look like the professor. Hmm. I have an idea. Much better. Water pressure, do your thing. By pressing the button, the electricity is connected to the pump, which intakes water from the tank and rapidly compresses it. The pressurized water will then be expelled through the outlet, along the hose, and out the nozzle, spraying whoever's in sight. Wow, compressed water really does result in a powerful force. Good on you, you sticky little hydrogen molecules. <laughs> now, let's spray a cup tower because, uh, well, it'll be fun. This Akuro Aqua Blaster 9000 is ready to go. Now let's go find the professor. Well, not you, professor. <laughs> Assistant Neon. Yes? After approximately a thousand false leads, I finally identified and sealed the leaky pipe in the basement. The water pressure should return to Professor World's shower momentarily. Oh, wait. Does that mean that I don't get to spray anyone with my patented Acro Aqua Blaster 9000? I'm afraid not. With the professor's shower operational and Akuro gone, it's only you and me left here. And oh no. Oh yeah. No. Ah. 
<laughs> well, it looks like my water pressure experiment works. <sighs> Too bad I didn't get to use it on the professor. Speaking of which, I wonder if his water's back on yet. Oxygen, oxygen, H2O. Sounds like it's working. Well, that's all for Professor Well today. Bye!